Hi, and welcome to another episode of Human Anatomy and Physiology with James. Today I'm joined with my friend Apollo here. We're not worried about the skull at this session. For the skull, the video is on YouTube. You can check out my YouTube channel. What I'm interested in today is the appendicular skeleton. The appendicular skeleton is comprised of the limbs and the gir girdles. The two girdles are the pectoral girdle and the pelvic girdle. These girdles are responsible for bringing the limbs, the bones of the limbs, to the axial skeleton, which is, again, the skull, the vertebral column, and the thoracic cage along the sternal bone. The appendicular skeleton is comprised of the following bones. The clavicle, the scapula, the humerus bone, the ulna bone, the radius bone, the carpals, the metacarpals, and phalanges here. The lower limb, here's the hip bone that we'll be looking at, the coxal bone. The thigh bone is the femur, the patella, the kneecap, the tibia, fibula, tarsals, metatarsals, and phalanges. That are, those are the bones of the appendicular skeleton. Let's take a closer look at each bone in detail and talk about them. Let's start with the clavicle. This makes up, this is one of two bones that make up the pectoral girdle. The other is the scapula, which we'll look at shortly. The pectoral girdle is comprised of the uh, clavicle. The clavicle has this marking called the conoid tubercle. That conoid tubercle is a good indicator of how we're going to position this clavicle because the conoid tubercle is closer to the chromial end, the acromial end of the clavicle, which forms the shoulder joint of the pectoral girdle. Uh, the other end is the sternal, sternal end, which uh, joins with the sternal bone or the sternum. And this is what it would look like. Again, here's the acromial end because that is the conoid tubercle, you position it that way, the acromial end will form nicely with the scapula to form the shoulder, and we'll look at the scapula right now. Here's your scapula. This here is the spine of the scapula. This would be the acromion of the scapula. The coracoid process the glenoid cavity. The glenoid cavity is where the humerus bone will articulate. Something like that. Articulation of the humerus bone and the glenoid cavity, uh, uh, scapula will occur at the glenoid cavity. Other markings of interest include the suprascapular notch for the passage of blood vessels and veins and nerves. Um, other markings include the infraspinous fossa and the supraspinous fossa. Okay, that is your scapula. Now let's take a closer look at the humerus bone, this bone in particular. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, associated with the bicep muscle. Okay, that one right there. And it is primarily responsible for leverage, raising the arm bringing the forearm towards the, the shoulder. Okay, that is your humerus bone. Important markings include the head. This would be the head of the humerus bone. Um, the trochanter, I'm sorry, tubercles, lesser tubercle, greater tubercle, right there. Now between the tubercles is this groove called the intertubular groove. And this right here is an example of my left humerus. Let's look at the other markings as we make our way down. Right here, this feature here that looks almost like an hourglass tipped on the side is called the trochlea. And we'll see what the trochlea does shortly. Immediately next to the trochlea is the capitulum, this knob-like feature right here. And please ignore uh, these metal uh, markings. They are my markings. On the sides are epicondyles. This would be the medial epicondyle, that would be the lateral epicondyle. Let's turn our humerus bone around 
And here's a fossa, a deep indentation. That is called the olecranon fossa, and that's very important for articulating with the ulnar radius bones, which we'll see shortly. Right here, you'll see a, there's a protrusion almost outward. That is called the deltoid tuberosity. Okay. Now let's show, uh, this is the right hu left humerus, and this will be my right humerus. Let's look at the right hand. This here is the ulna bone, okay, medial, and lateral, the radius bone right here. Let's take a close look at the details of the ulna bone. This process at the very top is called the olecranon process. That becomes important for the swinging of the elbow. Um, this feature right here that gives it the monkey wrench appearance, or this opening of the, of the mouth, is called the tropier notch, and that is how the the numerous will latch in to the ulna bone. Uh, there's this indentation right here. This marking is called the radial notch for the radius, which we'll see shortly. Now I want to show you how exactly this ulna bone latches on to the humerus bone. The olecranon process will insert nicely into the olecranon fossa, just like that. It'll sit nicely in there, and you turn it around, and you'll notice that the mouth, that tropier notch, provides a nice, comfortable rest, resting spot for the humerus that allows for that swinging, just like that, that articulation. That's how it's done. And the capitulum now, this capitulum articulates nicely with the radius bone right there. And the radius bone inserts nicely into the radial notch like so. So let me position this for you. Nicely like that. That is how the hand will swing. Okay. Now let's look at the radius bone. This would be the head of the radius, this protrusion outward, the radial tuberosity, making our way down towards the hand. This would be the uh, styloid process of the radius and the styloid process of the ulna bone. The ulna bone and the radius uh, bones will now articulate with the hand. Now the hand is made up of several bones, and I'll turn it around so that you can see. The carpals, or the wrist bones, which allows for flexion of the wrist, include the following. This bone right here, you're going to have to zoom in real close. Can you see that? This bone right here is the scaphoid. This one, the trapezium, the trapezoid, okay? This one here will be the capitate, right here. That would be the hamate. That would be the lunate, this bone right here, the lunate. And then you have two bones, the triquetrium and the pisiform, one on top of the other. And that forms that bump at the wrist. That bump that you, that's very noticeable at the wrist. These right here, one, two, three, four, five, make up the metacarpals. And these are the meta, I'm sorry, phalanges phalanges running here. The phalanges can then be classified as the following. At uh, the very tip, the distal, middle, and proximal phalange, phalanges. Uh, the, thumb, the thumb, of course, has only two phalanges, the distal and the proximal. There's no middle phalange, phalanx, sorry. Okay. That's the upper limb, the humerus, the arm, the forearm, the hand. Now let's now look at the lower limb. Let's start with our the biggest bone, largest bone of the body, longest, strongest, and um, uh, biggest. This bone is the femur. Here it is. Here's an example of my right femur bone. These are the, the markings you should be aware of. This is the head of the femur bone. 
inside the head, you'll notice that there is a, uh, a pit. This is called the fovea capitis, to which a ligament will attach uh, and join the coxal bone, which we'll see shortly. Connecting the neck to the rest of the connecting the head to the rest of the bone is our neck. Okay? The greater trochanter, lesser trochanter, and that here is a nice line between the two. Making our way down anteriorly, you'll have the surface for the patella. That's called the patella surface. Posteriorly, the this is called the intercondyle fossa. Okay? These are the two condyles. So the intercondyle fossa will be between the two condyles. And of course, again, the epicondyles. Very similar to the humerus bone. This bone then articulates nicely with the tibia bone. Here's your tibia. This right here is the fibula, the head of the fibula. And this would be called the malleosis. It's very analogous to the styloid process, but it's called the lateral malleosis. This, the medial malleosis, that's on the tibia. Tibia has what's called the uh, condyles, okay, the medial condyle, lateral condyle. And at the very top, there's a prominence called the intercondyle eminence. Okay, that will articulate nicely with the femur bone, like so. That eminence that is right there, you might not be able to see it here clearly, but there's a nice eminence there uh, that resides between, that will position itself between the two condyles of the femur bone. Okay. This right here is called the tibia tuberosity, and this lining, this sharp emergence of the bone is called the anterior crest. And that's the tibia for it. Where the tibia joins the fibula is called the tibiofibular joint. This would be the distal tibiofibular joint, and this will be the proximal uh, tibiofibular joint. Let's now look at the tarsals, the foot. Okay? Here are the bones of the foot. One good way to remember this is think of milk. This will be the medial cuneiform, intermediate cuneiform, lateral cuneiform, and cuboid. M-I-L-C, milk. This bone below the medial and intermediate cuneiforms is the navicular, and there's the talus, okay? And the biggest of them all, the calcaneus, or the heel bone. What I'm holding in my hand right now is the coxal bone. The coxal bone is essentially the hip bone. It's comprised of three regions. The ilium, top here. Ilium, the pubic region, which is about halfway here, and the ischium, right here. Now let's look at some of the important markings. This giant fossa, or depression, is called the acetabulum. It articulates nicely with the head of the femur bone, just like that that ball and socket feature of the hip bone. Um, other markings include the pubic tubercle, the pubic crest, and the obturator foramen. Okay, obturator foramen, acetabulum, pubic crest, pubic tubercle, and this region back here would be called the ischium. Now the ischium has some interesting markings as well. Here is the lesser sciatic notch, right here. The greater sciatic notch, right here. All of this region right here would be considered the ilium, and this would be the iliac, iliac crest. Iliac crest. Okay, the last bone I haven't touched on is the patella, the kneecap. It's a sesamoid shaped bone, and here it is. And there you have it, the bones of the appendicular skeleton. For more details, you can visit my website, orinjames.com, www.orinjames.com. Thank you.